Hi, I'm Nico Ritschel and I'm a PhD student at the University of British Columbia. Today I'm presenting our paper Comparing Block-Based Programming Models for Two Armed Robots. This is joint work with JetBrains Research and Virginia Commonwealth University. I want you to imagine that you have access to an industrial robot and you would like to program it to solve a simple task like the following one. You want to pick up an item with one robot arm, pass it over to a second robot arm, and then have that arm pass it on to, let's say, a human worker. How would you program a robot to do this? Well, you might choose not to solve this task by yourself, but to hire a professional robot programmer to do it for you. That robot programmer would use an IDE, like Robot Studio, that you can see currently on screen, to write the program. Unfortunately, learning how to use an IDE like Robot Studio not just requires programming experience, but also special training in robot programming. So finding an expert is going to be time consuming and expensive. However, robots have become more popular and there has been a recent push to make them programmable by users that are not professional programmers. So instead of Robot Studio, you could use an environment like the one you can currently see on screen that combines block-based programming with physical programming to allow end users, like factory workers, to program robots themselves. However, this work has one big limitation. It can only program one robot arm at a time, and there's no way to coordinate the programs for multiple robot arms. And without coordination, tasks like the one that I just showed to you become almost impossible to solve. The goal of our work is to overcome this limitation. We want end users to coordinate two robot arms so that they can solve tasks effectively and reliably. To find ways how we could coordinate robot programs, we looked at existing block-based languages like Scratch. Scratch is one of the most popular block-based languages and it uses events and signals to coordinate multiple threats. However, each entity, so in our case, each robot arm, has its own program, and they are not shown on the same screen at the same time. Programs are also fragmented into small pieces, and it is hard to see what gets executed in which order or simultaneously. Here you can see Alice that uses a different approach. It has do in order blocks and do together blocks, and they can be nested. Do in order blocks get executed just like you would expect one statement after another, top to bottom. For do together blocks, on the other hand, all statements get executed at once. At the end of a do together block, the program then waits for all statements to finish before it continues. In Alice, programs are easier to read top to bottom than in Scratch, but it is still hard to see what gets executed simultaneously, especially if you imagine that blocks can be nested much deeper than in this example. This brings us to our approach. We decided to present the programs for both robot arms side by side. The program for the left arm is on the left, and the program for the right arm is on the right. In this example program, both arms are picking up and carrying an item together. As you can see, there are also blocks that affect both arms, and they span both columns. In this example, we have a move block where both arms do the same movement synchronously. This design idea leads to some interesting considerations when you think of tasks like the one that I've shown to you before. This task has one moment where timing is critical. The left arm needs to wait until the right arm has grabbed the item before it can release it. In the program on the left, we use what we call implicit synchronization. After every single line, the two arms wait for each other. That makes it easy to read the program top to bottom like a timeline and you can clearly see that one arm closes its hand before the other one opens it. But it also restricts the program, for example, when timing of some commands might not matter at all. On the right here, you see another design. Here we use what we call explicit synchronization. You can see that we have wait for each other blocks that work like barriers. They allow programmers to define when they want the arms to wait for each other. That gives them more freedom to customize their program. But as you can see, it also makes the program longer and statements in the same line are not always executed simultaneously. 
Therefore, we expected this design to be harder to understand for end users. Here you can see another design alternative we have considered. Block-based programs normally flow top to bottom, just like text or normal program code. But in other areas, like video editing or animation, time tracks flow from left to right. So we were wondering whether horizontal flow could make programs easier to read for end users who might be more familiar with these designs. However, as you can see, we had to replace much of the text with icons to fit programs on the screen with this layout. To evaluate the four design alternatives that you have seen, we have used two approaches. First, we evaluated them analytically and analyzed their trade-offs in terms of expressiveness and usability. I've already told you some of these trade-offs, but there are more in our paper. Then we conducted a comparative survey with 273 industrial participants, of which 110 were novices. We structured our study as a controlled experiment with three program comprehension tasks and also conducted a usability survey using the system usability scale. Here are some of our results. Surprisingly, there was no significant difference between how well users understood all of our designs. They were able to understand all of them equally well, however, users did express a preference for the designs with vertical flow. This table therefore summarizes our results. As I have mentioned before, explicit synchronization is more expressive than implicit synchronization, and since users preferred vertical flow, this makes the design with explicit synchronization and vertical flow the best in all the aspects that we have analyzed. So we went ahead and implemented it as a front-end prototype. We also evaluated this prototype on 11 users. We found that most of them were able to program tasks like the one you can currently see on screen fairly quickly and with little instructions. One particularly interesting observation we made was that many users avoided concurrency intuitively where it was not absolutely necessary, maybe because they were intuitively aware that this would make their programs more complex and potentially more error prone. This concludes what we present in our paper. Since it got published, we have finished our prototype implementation and are now planning a larger scale user study with a real robot. We are also looking into how we can transfer our design ideas to other coordination scenarios like more than two robot arms or other robot types than just stationary arms. More broadly, we're also interested in how block-based programming can be used outside of education. We think that a lot of work has been done on block-based languages and education and the pedagogy of teaching programming with them, but there could be more work done on how to use them in industry, for example, for robot programming. We are also especially interested in how block-based programming can be combined with visual programming features like side-by-side -side presentation that I've shown to you earlier to improve them. In summary, if we consider the trade-off between expressiveness and usability and learnability, professional robot programming and the previous work on block-based programming were on two opposite ends of the spectrum. One was hard to learn, but highly expressive, while the other was simple, but not expressive enough to solve many practical tasks. We believe that our way to support coordination was able to overcome this limitation and make block-based programming practically useful without making it hard to learn. We invite you to read more about our approach and more interesting evaluation results in our paper, which can be found online in TSE Early Access. Thank you, and I'm happy to answer your questions now.